Welcome. In this video, we're going to do a solo playthrough of Shadows of Brimstone and the Swamps of Death. So I believe I've stated this as my number two favorite game at the moment, and that is based off of playing with multiple players. So we're going to see how this goes solo. I've chosen the Indian Scout. We've got his stats here. I did a video on character creation. You can download a character sheet and write everything in there. But starting out, everything stayed the same except my spirit has gone up to a four. So I've got the lantern. Of course, I'm going solo, so I've, I'm controlling that. I have a locket, which gives me the plus one spirit, and we can add plus one to our rolls for catching our breath. I've gone with the heightened senses. Once per turn, you may reroll a single die for one of your to hit and defense rolls. And of course, we've got our carbon and Indian hatchet. And special abilities were tracker once per adventure. We may discard and redraw an exploration token or encounter card just revealed. We're fast, move a one. 10 health, 10 sanity, four up on saves. Combat, we get two dice. Melee, four up. Range is four up. Since we are playing solo, we get two revive tokens. We start with one grit, and I chose to start with bandages. So for our mission, I am just starting out with the basics. So we're going with a few dark stone more. So sitting in a saloon one afternoon, you overhear talk of a local mine up in the hills that is a large deposit of dark stone just waiting for someone to come and claim it. Sounds too good to be true, and it probably is, but the old prospector swears up and down that he would go claim it himself if he were 20 years younger. It's not hard to figure out which mine system he's talking about based on the landmarks he mentions. And though the other patron he tells just to miss him, this could be the big score you've been looking for. So for setup, we're going to use the standard setup and all heroes start on the mine entrance map tile, which I have set out here, and we can start in these back two rows. Our mission goal, basically this is a choose your own. We can go for small, medium, or large. I'm just going to go for the small deposit mission length. We need to find two clues. There's no special rules. Our objectives, when the final clue is discovered, we found the deposit. Ignore attacks and encounters. Also ignore any doors. Uh, reveal all growing dread cards in the stack as normal. Then we must face an epic threat. And when you're playing one or two heroes, instead of an epic threat, you go with a high threat. If we succeed, we're gonna get 25 XP and D3 Darkstone. Failure. Uh, the darkness escapes the mines and wreaks havoc on, havoc on the countryside and the neighboring towns. When the heroes travel to a frontier town before the next adventure, D3 random buildings there will have been destroyed by the escaping darkness. So with that, we are ready to begin. The game turn starts with holding back the darkness, then the models activate. We have room exploration and then end up the turn and rinse and repeat until we either meet our objective or we've lost the game. I do have some upgrades in this, so I've got the 3D depth track. And then I've got some tokens here for experience and some more for money. These were in some different sets. I'm not sure which one they came in though. So we start with holding back the darkness or at least attempting to. Got a roll of eight, so we're good there. So then we're going to activate. So rolling for movement and we are plus one. So we got a movement of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to search the next map tile. So the first time we use any of these stacks, I'll go ahead and give them a quick shuffle. So for the first map tile, we are finding the mining lift. And we're going to go ahead and play advanced with the encounters and go looking for the broken lift. I can get these back in there. So we need the broken lift. So we found that. Give those a shuffle and put them back in. So that goes in here. And we are going to randomize our exploration tokens and see which one 
comes out for us. So we found a clue and another world gate. So we roll to see where the gate is. It's going to be here. And we get another encounter. So we'll go with the gates first or the broken lift. An old mining lift lies at the far end of the room. You might be able to get it working. So we can do cunning six up or luck five up. Her cunning is a two and her luck is a two. But we just need a five, so we'll go for the luck. Needing a five and got a five. So it failed, so we're good there. Then the next encounter, we've got a void layer. Passage is covered in thick, sticky webs of soft sacks like lying the walls and floor. All heroes on this map tile need to roll one higher to hit their attacks. Uh, four up to hit becomes a five up. So we got to roll a d6. Getting a six. Uh, so dormant x uh, no effect. This card remains in play, so hopefully we don't have to fight anything there. And this was closed off. The good news, we're one half to finding the dark stone. Bad news, we're going to a different world to find it. So our next turn, hold back the darkness. Got a seven, so we're good. Rolling for movement, getting a three, we're plus one. So one, two, three, and that's not cut off. So we can go here. And we'll use our action to look through this gate. So we'll get my other world cards, randomize those. Well, since there's just two, we'll just go one to three, five to six. So we are going to the swamps of Jargano. So in that space, any attack is an ambush attack on a D6 roll of one, two, or three. Heroes are plus two on all rolls to catch your breath. So right now we're in the mines. I wasn't expecting to go anywhere, but there's no special effects in the mines. So looking in the swamps. We find a boneyard lake. So we're looking through that. I'm going to just move that off the board. We're out of view anyway. And we're also looking for the Boneyard Encounter. So we'll put that down there and shuffle. And unlike on this side, we're not actually in there. So we are not going to see what that is until we move. So next turn. Holding back the darkness. Now uh, we are, we've got two more revealed. Got a five, so we failed. That moves down on this spot. Roll for movement. Got four movement. So these spaces are adjacent. So one, two, three, and four. Ending our turn, we'll see what this is. So we're getting two encounter cards. And we would have two doors if that was an option. We've only got one. So two more encounters. First one is the Boneyard. The area stretches out into a murky lake filled with massive bones of long dead creatures. As you pass through, you keep an eye open for anything of value, devoured long ago by one of these beasts. When successfully scavenged here, here I may draw one extra scavenge card and then choose one to discard. This map tile may be scavenged four extra times. Where there are any heroes on this map tile, the hold back the darkness roll needs to be one higher than normal to succeed. And that remains in play. Next, got a swampy nest. 
You stumbled into a rather feral looking nest of large eggs. Some of them are cracked and broken open. Whatever hatched here, it was big. So we need to make an agility four up test. Our agility is a three. So we made the test. If successful, gain 10 XP as you move quietly away without disturbing the eggs. So I'll just keep that off to the side. And lastly, carnivorous brain flies. A swarm of vicious insects descend from a floral canopy to feed. You need to make a cunning four up. Our cunning is two. And we got the four up. Gain 10 XP for each, every four up rolled. For each die that did not roll a four up, take two wounds, ignoring defense. So we will add some damage to our sheet. And bank 10 more XP. Next turn, holding back the darkness. Got a seven but it needs to be one higher than our normal. So we failed, which goes into darkness. So the first time using this, we'll give it, oops, something's facing the wrong direction. Give that a shuffle. Power of the Void. All void enemies are now plus one in combat. That remains in play. So we'll bring that out. Roll for movement. So seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna search. And we'll say we're coming in this direction now. So we're looking for a cross passage and that gets no exploration token. That does move up. So we'll just move this world out of the way for now. Won't be needing it, maybe. So that ends our turn. Hold back the darkness. We succeeded, but it's doubles. So we go to our depth event chart. Yeah, volley of arrows. Each hero in Jargano takes three hits. Any hero that takes one or more wounds from this also gains a poison marker. So three hits. We are gonna spend our grit to reroll. Didn't matter. So we are poisoned. So poison, it's deadly and long lasting. Let's see, every turn in which a hero has one or more poison markers on them at the start of their activation, roll a d6 for each marker, roll a one to two, take a wound, ignoring defense. Three, four, five, no effect. Six, poison has worn off and the marker is discarded. All right, so that wasn't the greatest. We're moving on. That gets us a grit back. One, two spaces. We will go ahead and attempt a scavenge. Roll to six. We'll shuffle this up and merging darkness. We got 10 XP. That's the good news. Bad news, we draw a darkness card. And that is overwhelming dread. Add a growing dread card to the stack. Got a real bad feeling about this. So growing dread. Oh yes, and we were poisoned. So we should have rolled for that. We got a six, which means we removed it. And next turn. So holding back the darkness. We got a seven, we're good with that. Rolling for movement. 
one space we will explore finding a burial ground also looking for gruesome totems I found that encounter card and that is going to have us coming in like so And our next token, we've got one exit and one encounter. So we'll roll to see where our exit will be. It's gonna be up here. So we'll block the short path off. Getting another encounter card. So the first one, the entire area is filled with stone Carved totems, hideous faces of monsters and serpents. Lore five up test, or lures three. We got a five. If successful, you recognize this as a burial ground and search for any offerings. Each hero may draw a loot card. Well, there's no reason to ever not get a loot card. So shuffle this up. This should come in handy. We get 20 XP. It's gonna take us up to a total of 50. And we draw a gear card or an artifact card if we're in another world, which we are. We're getting a Jargono artifact. So give this a shuffle. And we found a dark stone blade. So it does have some dark stone in it. Your combat hits are critical hits on rolls of five or six instead of only a six. One handed and a little heavy. So we'll add that to our stash of goodies. Then decayed traveler. Half buried in a swamp, the corpse of a decaying alien traveler lies slumped against a tree. There's something clutched in his hand. So luck five up. Our luck is two. We got a four. We will use a grit to try harder. Got a five and a six. So if successful, you pull an ancient device from his body, draw a mine artifact card. We'll get our mine artifacts out. Give them a shuffle. And we found a three-eyed skull. Once per adventure, prevent all sanity damage a hero is about to take from a single source. That's pretty good. So that turn went well for us. So next round, hold back the darkness. We made it, roll for movement, moving four, one, two, three, and four. We'll attempt to scavenge. We got a six. We'll put that there, shuffle up our scavenge stack. 10 XP and nothing to find. So we add that to our stack, ending our turn, back to the depth track. We failed. And I uh, failed to move that earlier. So on to our movement. One gets us a grit. We'll scavenge again. Actually, no, we can't. We just scavenge once there. End her turn, depth track, made it, movement, search over here, breaker board,
And our next map tile is a T-junction. No exploration. All right, another turn. Holding back the darkness. Failing to a blood splatter. So get a darkness card. Flood of bats. Black Tide of Bats pours through the cavern, engulfing the heroes and passing by. Each hero takes two horror hits, gains 10 XP, and must then pass a Strength 4 test or lose a Dark Stone. Well, jokes on them, we don't have any Dark Stone. So the two horror hits, four ups, we're fine, 10 XP, we're fine. Strength 4 up, our Strength is two. And we made it. So the bats did not hinder us. Oops. So roll for movement. Go wherever we want. One, two, three, four. Look through another door. And that is the problem with this game. It takes up some space. So I'm breaking our map up. I'm going to be going backwards. Tribal altar, looking for a primitive altar for the encounter card. This moves up. Primitive altar there. So our altar. Comes in there. Flip this up. All right, so we found our second clue. So we're going to ignore any attacks and encounters listed on that token. But we do get a growing dread. All these doors are going to be closed. And sometimes you just go through this thing without getting too many fights. Downside, you don't get much XP that way. So we will go ahead and go through this. Tribal looking altar rest here, cut into the half buried stonework of an ancient ruin. The fire still burn and a foul smelling offering has been left as sacrifice to who knows, who knows what. Might not be a good idea to stick around and see. Choose to ransack the altar for valuables or ignore it and move on. Nothing happens as you pass it by. So it's a spirit five up, we are a four. So yeah, we're gonna ransack it for valuables. Rolling four dice, needing a five up. And we failed. We'll try harder with some grit. We got a six. So gain 25 XP. Moving that over. And draw a loot card as you pilfer the altar. So our loot. It's going to be 30 XP and a dark stone. So 30 XP. And we'll add some dark stone to our card. All right, then we're going to reveal all the growing dread cards and then fight a high threat since we're just one hero here. Like I said, we chose to go looking for two clues, so that's what triggered that. First growing dread. Humanity's in, only now at the end do you realize the full scale of humanity's struggle for survival. Every hero immediately gains D6 corruption points, ignoring willpower. Interesting. We got five, which is weird because that's a max corruption we can hold before we uh, mutate. So we've got some things bookmarked in the rule book. Mutation chart is one of them. So we're gonna roll D36 
which means we're going to roll two dice of different colors. Choose one to be first. We'll say the reds is first. So we just rolled a 22. We refer to that chart. Rock skin. Your skin becomes hard and crusty like it's made of rock. You're plus three health, but minus one move each turn. To a minimum of one movement. All right. And then... Void Surge. The dark stone you are carrying glows brightly as it burns to the touch with an eldritch fire. All heroes immediately take one corruption hit for each dark stone they are carrying, including dark stone icons on items. So we have one dark stone and one item. So two more corruption. So we've got that out of the way. Now we get a high threat to fight. which is going to be a slasher and two low threat cards. Six void spiders and P tentacles. So we'll roll our P die, four tentacles. Get this out of the way. All right, so our tentacles are the slowest thing. So we'll look at those first. Initiative to smash. So when uh, they attack us, we need to keep track of when they roll sixes. Move a six, escape, four. Fours up, they hit. Three dice, three damage each. Four health and two damage. And they are void, so plus one combat. Not good for the home team. Well, I guess the away team. And they will start setting up in that area, like so. Do some cleanup. Don't need any more of those tokens. Then the slasher pops in. So fear two heroes starting their activation adjacent takes two horror hits. Critical hits only reduce the slasher's defense to two rather than zero. Hits on three ups, two dice, d6 is each, four defense, six health. To beast, not void. Then the spiders. All right, no abilities. Hitting them four up, two dice, two damage, and three health. So we've got that set up. So we have an initiative of five. Spiders go first. They are going to surround us. So all six are on us. So that's gonna be 12 dice. I'm just gonna roll them all at once. Hitting on four ups. All those are misses. The tentacle to hit rolls of six up ignore our defense. So there's one that's ignoring our defense. So we'll just go ahead and take the two damage on that one. Then our defense is a four up. So we're going to take four more damage. So we're up to eight out of 13. Then we get to go next. We're gonna roll for movement, ending a five. We can't move anywhere, but we could possibly get some grit.
Oh wait, those things were void. Each one of those had an extra die to roll. So six more dice. All right. So those four would have killed us. We've got a revive token, which brings us back full health. With a grit. And then two more damage. You move this down a little bit. We're gonna use our gun, gives us three shots, and that's the reason why I'm taking it. Our other items only give us two. So we got two hits there. One's a crit, which isn't gonna matter for these guys. We're gonna take it out of the back row. So on this one, we're doing five damage, which kills it on that one. Those two are down, which gets us a total of 20 experience. So the slasher is next. Got a movement of five. Normally he wouldn't reach us, but since he's large and these guys are small and medium, he can move them out of the way. So one, two, three. Actually, let's see, where was he? Right there. Movement of five. One, two, three, four, and five. Would be his best attack. Rolling two dice. Hits for both of them. D6 damage on each of those. So one's doing five, one's doing four. I'm going to defend. The red dice is on the five. I'm going to re-roll the red die. And fail. I just took nine damage up to 11 out of 13. Then the tentacles will move and they do not displace anything. So I've got an option to make. I can quit and run now before I roll dice. I do have one revive left. Unfortunately, these things are gonna surround me and this guy's gonna go again. So I feel like I'm gonna die at least twice. So with that in mind, I'm running and turning tail. So I'm gonna leave and end the adventure. So the whole purpose of doing that is so that I do not take an injury or madness and live to fight another day. So things that happen, we're gonna fully heal, remove any status effects if we had them, resolve the fail effect. Uh, so basically D3 random buildings will have been destroyed by the escaping darkness, which isn't gonna matter because we don't have enough money to buy anything anyway. Roll for corruption and dark stone. So we have one dark stone and one item. So we're gonna roll two dice. Got a six and a three. So we're gonna take one corruption hit from a one, two or three. So we need a four up to save from that. We made that. And then we reset to one grit for our town stay. So we'll clean up and we're gonna to head to town. Okay, for our adventure, we did end up with a 145 experience. We need 500 to get to second level, so I'll just log that on my sheet. Now for preparing for travel, we're gonna roll a D6. On a one or two, something bad happens. All right, there's our two. So we are going to roll three D6s, add them together. Getting a 17. So go to our travel hazard chart. 17 is an army convoy traveling the roads. The heroes come upon a massive US army convoy heading toward the same town to reinforce the outpost here. When the heroes reach town, any rolls on the campsite hazard chart or the town event chart are plus one to the roll. All right. So for us failing the last 
mission. D3 of these town areas are destroyed. So before destroyed, since first time looking at this, got a docs office where we can heal injuries and mutations, which I might want to visit since we have a mutation. General store, we can buy some things. Church, help madness, cure corruption, which we have two. Blacksmith, forge dark stone and buy horses. Frontier outpour, outpost, we can sell dark stone. And the saloon for entertainment and buying some whiskey. So D3. So two of those places are destroyed. The first one destroyed is the church. So we'll just cover that up. And the next one destroyed is the general store. So not buying clothes, weapons, or equipment. So starting the day, we have to choose to either go to the hotel and pay $10 per day or the campsite. We currently don't have any money, so we're going to the campsite. So we're rolling a 2d6 to see what happens. And since we're with the army convoy, we get to add a plus one to this. So we rolled a seven. So an uneventful night, no effect. An eventful evening of drunken debauchery and raucous songs around the campfire. So then we can choose to go to town. And one of the kind of free actions we can do in town is sell any of our items. So I'm gonna sell this to get 475 gold. And we're gonna to choose to go to the doc's office. First thing we're gonna do is roll on our location event. So 2d6. Getting a six. So the smell of death, all too familiar at the doc's office, no event. And the first thing we're gonna do is have some surgery done to try to remove our mutation. If you can afford to pay the cost, choose one injury or mutation you wanna remove and roll on the chart below. So it's gonna cost us D6 times 50. So for once I wanna roll low. And we rolled a five, so $250 goes away. So we still have 200 and a quarter left. Then it comes down to a roll of a D6. And we got a three, which means it's failed. So we're gonna roll some grit and re-roll that and hopefully do better. Getting a four. Success, the injury mutation is healed. So we're no longer covered with rock skin. Then we're going to spend $100 to get two more bandages. And end our day. So at the end of the day, we're going to roll to see if we have a town event. We're good, so we're going to day two. We're gonna spend 10 gold. And then run down to the Frontier Outpost. Rolling 2d6. Got a five. Darkstone Glut. See, Darkstone sold to the Outpost is only worth d6 times 10 per shard today. Cancels out Darkstone Shortage. All right, so we're not getting enough money for a dark stone, but we're gonna go ahead and sell anyway. So normally it's D6 times 25, but it's just D6 times 10. So we're getting 40 money back. And while we're here, we're gonna see if there's a bounty. Uh, limit once per town, stay for all heroes. Well, a D6 to see what current bounty is at the outpost. So for our next adventure, we'll possibly get some money for killing these things. So we're rolling a D6. It's a two. So for every tentacles we get, $10 for each one killed. And with that, we're gonna end our stay and our time in town. We do roll for the chart. Got a two. So since we didn't beat that number, we're rolling on the town event chart. We are plus one because of the army con convoy. So it goes from a four to a five. So we got the fever. Tira must make a spirit six up test to avoid the sickness. If successful, gain 10 XP. If fail, take D3 
Or D6 plus three wounds, ignoring defense. Goodness. Our spirit is a four. We need a six. We've got a six. So we're good, and we got 10 experience. So that's the way we're going to end this. So we got 155 experience. We need 500 for the next level. And that's the basics of how to play solo. So while I didn't run away with an injury, I was not successful in finding the loot of Darkstone. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.